We're on the way into New York City to go to the new DJI product launch, and we are hoping to see the new Mavic Air, which is supposed to be a smaller, uh, faster, foldable drone in kind of the mid Mavic category. it up it's got a good heft to it and I would uh, say there's a lot of the spark design language in here there's a lot of spark in this uh, the unibody the way the arms attach just looks like the new shapes this is the shape that they showed in the preview that didn't really give a lot away it's actually not the back it's, it's not the front it's the back that's the thermal exhaust vent here for the air that comes in through over the gimbal the battery looks to be a pretty good size, which is how they're getting 22 minutes of time out of it, which is really impressive for a drone this size. It's absolutely incredible that a drone this size is going to get this much flight time. I, uh, I'm really impressed with the gimbal mount as well. It does look like it's not going to take as much abuse as the Mavic did. We had a lot of Mavics come in with repair. It would hit and it would rip the ribbon cable. I'm pretty sure that they went through here and they went through and found, found the, the, the failure modes and, and got rid of those. It's also relatively flush. If it, if it does hit, it's it's flush to the edge, so it just pops up and pushes in. So if you hit a flat surface, you're in pretty good shape. The antennas that pop out are probably gonna get forgotten by nearly everybody. They're adorable, they're not very big. Um, they seem more prominent on the painted drone than the black one. As you can see here, the painted ones look a little bigger. Sorry about that. But it's it's it just exudes intelligence. It just looks super smart. If you don't put this in in the right order, like this, you can't get the prop in. That's going to be something that's going to piss a bunch of people off. So now the prop will stay on. So you got to do it in the right order or it won't go on. See, did it in the wrong order. So, I'm a monkey with a drone here. Ah, uh, the props, if the things aren't folded down, they don't fold up right. So that'll encourage you to fold them up, but will it encourage you to unfold them? $999 with the Flymore seems like a really good price for all the drone you're going to get here, especially if you're using the same Mavic sensor with a lot more software attached to it. The new modes look amazing. Uh, you're, going to get, you're going to see some amazing stuff with that. The fact that you can put a cinematic tool into somebody's hands that all they need to do is know if it's clear to fly or not is pretty impressive. The red is gorgeous at distance, but you come up on it and it's just covered in fingerprints already. It's pretty fingerprint happy. I mean, literally you don't want to fly this and do something illegal because your fingerprints are going to be all over it. Um, which is good. This is going to drive me absolutely batty if I own one of these. So I'd end up going with the matte black or the white. The white looks really good. That's just screaming for a Stormtrooper mod. That's screaming for a Stormtrooper label. Um, that looks really good. The transmitter looks very similar to the Spark transmitter with a couple of major differences. The big one being apparently the sticks are removable. And then they stick in there and now you can store it flush and flat, which is really nice. So this is, and they have good feel to them too. It looks like there's a little more throw in them than the Mavic sticks. They have the same grip mount, no monitor, um, but you, and there's, there's a, and the knob is just a pan knob. There is no more adjustment knob on this side. So adjusting these settings are gonna be interesting with no knob. So once again, we're stepping into the consumer world and away from prosumer and pro. So those are tools that a pro would look at and go, well, I, I really wish I could control this, but I can't. There's a lot of questions I want answered with this and uh, I think we should go fly it. What can you tell me about the new smart avoidance mode on it? All right, so APAS, essentially what it does is that it starts to scan the area in front of it. Once it's actually seen the trees, the rocks, with what we have out here laid out, it starts to plan a route around it. So depending on the amount of distance that we have between the drone and the actual obstacle, it'll start to calculate either it's better to go up above or around it. When does it start to learn? Does it build on things it's already known from that location or does it learn it from when you As it's up? moving, okay. as it's going, okay. exactly. So it's scanning okay. both uh, vertically okay. and horizontally. So things can move, things can change, and it'll still work just as well. Yes, so okay. long as it starts within a certain amount of distance from where that scan starts, okay. right? Okay. All right, so the way it works is I'm just going to push forward and it's already started to move right by itself. Okay. 
Okay, and it's going to start to the pilot? Uh, a little bit because it's doing something I don't tell it to do, but I get for for beginners. That yeah. is absolutely what we want it to do. Essentially, absolutely. Well, let's say you're like you're flying through canyons and you're trying to keep a distance, or you're doing a we'll shot down a valley and you don't know where the back is. Exactly. And now it'll be avoiding exactly. It comes back, and so. it comes straight through it, no problem. So, what I've got just to show how it actually elevates as well. We're pointing at a couple of boulders up here. We have a couple of trees. I'm going to just push forward, and it's already starting to come up and above. Oh, wow. the trees and the rocks. And it makes that decision. Uh, yeah, it makes that decision based on altitude, based on wow. how tall the, the obstruction it is. It saw the crowd it. curved it in. It saw the crowd, yeah. Well I, I, well, I did the curving in because I don't want <laughs> to go over the crowd, right? <laughs> how does it fly compared to the, the Spark? Oh, the it's map? very, very steady. Incredibly steady. Extremely responsive. This thing is sport mode. Extremely responsive. And what turns off in sport mode? All the vision systems, or is it right? So now that? your collision avoidance and your A pads, you're not going to be able to enjoy those, and you're not going to be able to benefit from those in sport mode. Okay. Mainly because now in sport mode, we're allowed to tilt the drone to a certain degree okay. to where now those sensors are no longer going to be able to, okay. to be used. What, what can you tell me about the button on the back? So the button on the back just either uh, set, resets RC mode uh, or it's a mode switch. It's a, like yeah, it's a mode switch for link. Not for a hand launch. Okay. A lot of people might, you know, we. Uh, I know okay. it looks just like the button on the on the back of the Spark, but that's just for mode switching. Okay. From RC or to Wi-Fi to reset Wi-Fi or to link. Is this is there a Wi-Fi mode in this, or is it strictly transmitter only? Yes, there's a Wi-Fi mode in it. Okay, so it's much like the Spark in that regard. So, so you want to give this a try? Yes, I would. Okay, all right. Let me bring it back. Okay. So you in you're in standard mode. Okay, so. APAS is enabled. We're in standard mode. All you how gotta, do I tell here APAS is enabled? Okay, so APAS is, APAS right yeah, APAS is right there. Also, you can't see here because of what we have in the background on the screen, but you'll see it's right underneath the intelligent flight mode, so okay. the remote controller. That's where you enable APAS. So, with APAS enabled, and because we're flying indoors, it's got a max velocity. We only have uh, nice. about like two or three miles per so hour. So, a built in so tripod mode. Exactly. Basically. Built in tripod mode for when and you're This is completely indoors. GPS. We have, no, we have, VPS. We have zero indoors, GPS signals whatsoever here. This is a completely guidance-less drone, it's all using vision systems and cameras right, right now. Okay, so from push there, it straight forward. let's just, he's just gonna push it straight forward. It's already calculated Yep, it already started it. sliding to the right, which so is you know, very totally disconcerting. Right. It has stopped, I'm looking on camera. Yep, and now it's coming up and above, it sees that it wants to go over that tree, and let's stop it right there. It's absolutely precise, it's very, very precise. So you notice that it was less than about an inch off the ground, and it was still maintaining its location. And that is the worst air it could possibly fly in because that's all dirty air. It's pretty much getting caught in its own wake. It's not clean air at all. Keeping that about in less than an inch off the ground while still being able to keep that precision in its location, I've never seen a drone do that. That to me is one of the most impressive attributes of the Mavic Air. So I'm here with Mike. He is going to demonstrate the uh, vision system hand gesture control. And what is DJI calling the new version? Smart capture. Smart capture and he's going to talk us through how it works and then we're going to do a demo demonstration. Yep. All right, so uh, Smart Capture is one of our intelligent flight features. Um, so it's going to be found within our intelligent flight feature menu. Smart Capture is in the top right, just the hand symbol, pretty intuitive. Right, right. I'm going to go and enter that. It's going to give you a little thing to read about how it works. I'm going to hit enter and then I'll explain it instead. Okay. So it's going to detect your head, basically your face. Which it's already done, which is yeah. creepy. Basically what you're going to do is you're just going to put your hand out. It's going to detect your hand. You can see it here. Oh wow, okay. It's going to turn red. And red means it means that it's going to take off. Okay. It's just the red status is, indicator. Usually, red is a bad is a bad. Yellow and this one is usually the error message. Okay. So uh, go and keep holding your hands. Okay, it's gone green. So now I have control. I'm going to move it to the side, and that brings it in and away. Okay. So if I bring it closer, it brings the drone closer. I give it one hand. Now I'm back in tracking, and I can rise up. Compared to the Spark, it is a lot more responsive. You start and stop recording by the typical okay. picture that yeah. we know, and now we do picture in the Mavic Air by giving the piece of okay. So I'm really struck by the fusion of an exponential growth in technology, how we've got measure, better communications and vision systems and auto navigation and seven camera visual navigation and position awareness, along with a smaller form factor with no compromises in camera quality. So you've got a drone that for sub $1,000, you have a bag you can take anywhere in the world. It really makes you wonder, is the best camera in the world the best camera in the world, or is it the one you have when you need one? So do I recommend this for somebody who wants to get a first drone? Yeah. Yeah, it's an amazing drone with no compromises right now. 22-minute battery life 
from a drone the size of a racer is kind of insane. Usually you're getting four to seven minute flight times on a racer. This thing is, you know, co combined with the digital data link and position awareness and uh, with the um, airspace awareness with geo, all of the different intelligence systems that are in it. Uh, I don't know of another drone that's as capable for this amount of money. So five years ago, you couldn't have built this with $100,000. Five years ago, three years ago, you couldn't even be built this for 50 grand. You couldn't put all these parts together that didn't exist. There, there is a level of data fusion here that is something that's not possible by a home gamer anymore. So, you've got to buy into the ecosystem. Is this a good start? Absolutely. I think this would be a really good first drone for some.